r slash no sleep posted by you slash horror junkie 123 i got a job at long john silvers something went seriously wrong part 3 my heart dropped into my stomach and my face drained of color what the fuck ahmad feeding the rookie to an eldritch deity on his first day not cool man i hesitantly turned toward the little girl rocking back and forth slowly in the darkest corner of the room once i saw her face the creaking of the rocking chair fell silent. My eyes grew wide as dinner plates. My back was pressed against the wall like the floor in front of me was made of burning magma. Clarissa was the most downright evil child I had ever seen. Her pupils encompassed the entirety of her eyes, twin pitch black orbs that felt as if they could consume my entire being. She was ghostly white, and her face was framed by neatly kept black braids. She wore an outdated dress, Victorian era if I had to take a stab at it, along with matching shoes. The monstrosity smiled at me. Those yellow, rotting teeth were enough to make my skin crawl. But the worst part was her aura. Clarissa exuded an air of malevolence unlike anyone or anything I'd ever met. It was easily ten times worse than that of Alice, and that's really saying something. Come closer. Clarissa's demented voice floated to my ears from across the room. Her smile seemed to be growing wider by the second. We were playing a deadly game of cat and mouse, and spoiler alert, I was not the cat. I vehemently shook my head, keeping my back glued to the wall like my life depended on it, which, to be fair, it kinda did. Please. I'm lonely. Clarissa's voice was strange. It was as if someone had taken a little girl's voice and pitched it down an octave. A chill rippled down my spine every time she spoke. No, I don't think the Clarissa's eyes lit up, and she greedily licked her lips. I had a sinking feeling that I was about to screw up big time. Then. I remember something Alma told me. Don't speak directly to Clarissa. That's not a good idea is what I would say if I was talking to someone. Nope, just thinking out loud here. All alone. By myself. Just me. Clarissa's joyous expression shifted to an unsatisfied snarl. She almost had me, and she knew it. Suddenly, to my surprise, the door opened back up again. Congratulations, buddy. You passed the day. Smack. I socked Ahmad right in the kisser. He glanced back at me, blood trickling down his lip. What the fuck, Ahmad? You coulda killed me, you asshole. Really funny prank you just pulled, locking me in here with a damn demon child. Clarissa didn't hurt you. She's harmless as long as you don't touch her or speak directly to her. That's it. I just had to make sure you were capable of following basic instructions. And that really fucking hurt, you know that? He replied dabbing at his wound with a napkin he'd produced from his pocket. Obviously. Happy now? I don't want to spend another second in the same room as that thing. Or you, for that matter. Well, buckle up buttercup, because you're stuck with me, Ama grinned, slapping me on the back. Now, let's go. You're not the only one who doesn't like hanging around Clarissa. Was that really the only reason you brought me here? We didn't have anything to actually do? I mean, like maybe, I dunno, our jobs? I wondered aloud as the door word shut. No, not with Clarissa. That's the only upside to her. She doesn't make a mess, she doesn't piss or shit, and she won't even eat anything. All she does is sit, stare, and occasionally try to get you to speak to her so she can rip your insides out. Really, the only thing we need to do is dust her room every once in a while. So then, where to now? I knew I'd probably regret asking, but it's not like he was going to hide it from me. Now that the rookie ass I mean, Hey hey, now that the test is over, we're going back to the control room to pick up Lloyd and our equipment. The two of us are going to show you what being a keeper is all about, Ahmad smirked, sending a chill undulating through my body. I didn't like how he kept doing that. It felt like he was up to something mischievous. After once again passing through multiple doors, we found ourselves back in the control room. Greg stood in the corner talking with Lloyd, dressed in his signature fishing attire. Apparently, he'd finally decided to roll out of bed. Hey! There he is. Mason, glad to see you back, Greg boomed as he approached us. Yep, right on time, too, I said, a smile beginning to inch across my face. Hey, cut me some slack. This job ain't easy. Now, I think I gave you some papers or something yesterday. Oh yeah. I've got them right here, I replied, producing a crumpled wad of sheets from my back pocket. I watched Greg's expression falter as a pang of guilt stabbed my chest like an ice pick. Oh. Thanks, I guess, he said, pinching the disheveled mess as if it was a dirty diaper. 
I'll just put this to the side for now. Ahmad, did you show him the thing? Greg asked, shooting him a wink. What the hell, Greg? He was in on it this whole time? That's strike one, you dirty bastard. Yep, and he passed with flying colors. Lloyd and I were just about to show him how to feed Oculus, weren't we, Lloyd? Lloyd sighed, joining the group. Yeah. Yeah, we were. Mr. Calloway, feel free to come watch. We might even let Mason feed him his meal. You know what? I'll take you up on that. My workload isn't too bad today, and I know how much Lloyd loves Oculus. I could see Trina snickering out of my peripheral vision. Apparently, Lloyd saw her too, because he didn't look happy. Shut up, Trina. Keep it up and I'll substitute you for Oculus's breakfast today, he spat, scowling at her. I didn't even say anything. You just look for reasons to get pissed at me, she retorted, folding her arms across her chest. I don't look for reasons to get pissed at you. You give me reasons to get pissed at you, Lloyd said, his perturbed demeanor melting into a sly smirk. I could see a grin tugging at the corners of Elena's lips. Hey! You're supposed to be on my side, Trina shouted, glaring disapprovingly at her. No, we're all supposed to be on the same side. Alana's right, Greg interjected, we're supposed to have each other's backs. No more bickering, okay? And Trina, stop instigating this before I put you in time out again. That's not fair. Lloyd started it. Trina, Greg replied, shooting her a no-nonsense stare. She shifted her gaze to the floor. Fine. I'll be good. Thank you. Now, is everyone ready? Mason's not, Ahmad chimed in, here, take this. He handed me what appeared to be a cattle prod with buttons on the handle. It works like this, he said, distancing himself from the group. The bottom button is low voltage, the middle one is high voltage, and the top one. Well, we don't use that unless something seriously goes wrong. He demonstrated, pressing each of the respective buttons. I could hear a zapping sound steadily increase as he flipped through them. Got it. Is that all I need? For now, yes. We'll need to pay a visit to the meat locker first. I nodded. The meat locker? I guess I should have known they'd have one of those with how massive some of the creatures were. I mean, Alice is a Wendigo. They only eat human flesh, right? That must mean. Ahmad and Greg lead the charge, while Lloyd and I lag behind. I decided to take that opportunity to become acquainted with him and subtly squeeze some info out of him. So, uh, about the meat locker. Do some of these things eat human flesh? Lloyd pursed his lips and glanced up at me. They sure do. And it's our lucky day, because Oculus is one of them. Great. No one told me I'd have to handle corpses in addition to all this freaky shit. Thanks for filling me in on that, Greg. What exactly is Oculus? And why do you love it so much? You'll find out soon enough. I just hope you don't have arachnophobia, he replied stoically. Arachno what? Come on Lloyd, you can tell I'm not the brightest crayon in the box. Help a guy out here. Oh well. I guess I'd better wait and see for myself. Soon we found ourselves standing at the end of the hallway in the west wing. A large metal door stood before us. Ahmad grinned at me. I really wished he'd stop doing that. Mason, be prepared. Oculus's diet is peculiar to put it lightly. Yep, sorry to burst your bubble, but Lloyd already spilled the beans. Let's just get this over with, okay? Ahmad's smile faded into a dissatisfied frown. All right, have it your way. He muttered, reaching for the door handle. Once Ahmad pulled the door open, we were assaulted by a rush of cold air. I followed the group inside what appeared to be a giant refrigerator. Shelves upon shelves were lined with strange concoctions and containers filled with an assortment of different foods. The further inside we went, the stranger the items became. A dead deer, rabbit paws, squid tentacles. And then I saw it. Once the group finally came to a halt, my stomach began to churn and I started to feel lightheaded because lying on the shelf before me was a beheaded human cadaver. Its skin was pale, but still. It looked fresh. WH where did that come from? Like, who sends these here? I asked, dumbstruck. Though Lloyd had given me plenty of warning, it was still a shock to the system. I mean, what kind of fucked up organization keeps corpses on hand? Before you say it, yeah, I know. That's called a morgue, Mason. Hate to break it to ya, but this place ain't a damn morgue. At least, I don't think it is. Greg clasped me on the shoulder, nearly causing me to jump out of my skin. Ever wonder what happens to people who donate their bodies to science? Well, now you know. 
So, the government supplies them? Yep, they sure do, Ahmad said, wheeling a dolly over to the shelf. We just got a fresh shipment yesterday. Anything older than a week or so usually goes into that freezer at the end of the fridge. Waiting for these things to thaw is a pain in the ass, so be glad we don't need to today. So, um, what do they do with the heads? I asked sheepishly. Not sure, but my guess is that they dispose of them elsewhere out of respect for the donor. You know, on account what the bodies are being fed to, Ahmad replied, hoisting the headless carcass onto the dolly. That makes sense. It's still pretty fucked up, though. Don't worry, you'll be desensitized to it in no time. It might seem screwed up now, but hey, these creatures gotta eat, Greg bellowed, playfully slapping me on the back. Alright. Let's get going. I don't want to have to spend any more time with Oculus than necessary. I nodded, following Lloyd and the others out the door with Ahmad pushing the corpse as he walked. My heart pounded against my chest like a jackhammer as we passed each enclosure. I glanced up at the screen above Clarissa's room as we went. She was sitting motionless in her rocking chair, that demented smile still plastered on her face. What a creep show. Finally, we approached the door with a nameplate beside it that read Oculus. I couldn't take it anymore. I had to know. I glanced up at the screen that projected Oculus's habitat. It seemed to be modeled after a rainforest. Tree shielded the ground from view, limiting my field of vision. I thought I wouldn't have any luck. But, when my eyes drifted to the corner of the screen, I saw it. I could feel all the color draining from my face. A thick, massive web sat in the corner of the room. And in the center of that web? The biggest damn spider I'd ever seen. The thing was gargantuan. Though I was yet to see it up close, I could still gauge its size just from the recording. I was beginning to sympathize with Lloyd Hart. I fucking hate spiders. Here. Take these, Greg said, handing me a trash bag, disposable gloves, and a trowel. What? Why do I need these? And where'd you get this stuff from? I asked, perplexed. You thought I just wore this raincoat for show? It's got some big pockets. Perfect for storing things. Believe it or not, spiders shit just like every other living creature. Someone's gotta clean it up, and it ain't gonna be me, he shrugged, grinning mischievously. Spider shit? Really? That is the last thing I expected to hear. Hey Mason, come here for a second, Ahmad said, freeing me from my staring match with Greg. Watch this. Ahmad pressed an orange button on the keypad beside the door. Purple mist began to waft down from the ceiling. My eyes stayed glued on Oculus. The beast stood, then began to sway back and forth, before ultimately collapsing back onto its web. Then, the mist was sucked away as quickly as it had appeared. What was that? Did you kill it? Lloyd scoffed. Of course not. That would take a miracle. The mist only puts the thing to sleep. Once we get the go-ahead. We'll have to head in, dump its meal, and clean the place as quickly as possible. We'll only have about 15 minutes before it wakes up, and we do not want to be in there when it does. 15 minutes? They couldn't have given us a little more time? That's the government for you. They can afford millions in payroll and bribes to keep this on the down low, but this is where they decide to cut corners. Bunch of stingy assholes if you ask me. I could sense a deep-seated rage bubbling beneath Lloyd's words. It was one that I could definitely relate to. Fuck him. I'm with you on that. Truth be told, Lloyd was really starting to grow on me. I didn't know much about him, but he seemed like a pretty down-to-earth guy once you got to know him. You two quit flirting and get over here. We got the green light, Ahmad said, pointing to a literal green light illuminated on the keypad. Oh, the irony. We silently trudged over to him and waited with bated breath as the door flew open. My jaw fell to the floor once we stepped inside. Somehow, they had managed to create an exact replica of a tropical rainforest. Trees extended high into the air, blocking out most of the light, and creating an eerie atmosphere. Of course, there were no animals, or Oculus probably would have hunted them down the first chance it got. The only other noticeable difference was that the entire habitat was cloaked in spider webs. Walking through them made my skin crawl. Mason, you dump the body near Oculus's web, then come back and help us. Oh yeah, and don't get lost, Ahmad ordered. Aye aye, Captain, I said, saluting him as he disappeared into the brush. He glanced back only briefly, rolling his eyes at my antics. Seriously, Ahmad? You're making me handle a dead body on my first day. How did you expect me to react? I dropped my things at the entrance, and begrudgingly did as I was told, carefully dragging the dolly behind me so as not to accidentally drop the headless cadaver onto the ground. 
Honestly, it wasn't an easy task. I had to pull the thing through dirt, which made the whole ordeal even more laborious. After what had to have been about 5 minutes, I finally reached my destination. I felt a sudden surge of adrenaline when I laid eyes upon the thing. Up close, Oculus was so, so much more terrifying. It was easily the size of two of me put together. Its gargantuan black exoskeleton shimmered in the light like a sleek new paint job on a luxury sports car. Eight massive, hairy legs dangled from their owner's web, each one sporting a razor-sharp, claw-like appendage. But the worst part was its face. Eight beady eyes seemed to be locked onto me, piercing my objectively tiny frame with their unseeing, yet intense gaze. And those fangs. Each one was easily the size of my forearm. What I assumed to be either venom or saliva dripped to the ground from their pinpoint tips, the mystery liquid pooling in the dirt beneath the web. My hands trembled as I dumped Oculus's meal from the dolly. My hazy vision stayed glued to the monstrosity lying before me, searching for any reason to book it out of there if need be, though, if that thing was to attack. I wouldn't stand a snowball's chance in hell at outrunning it. I slowly backed away, dragging the dolly with me. Right when I thought I was going to win our sickening staring match, I noticed something that made me fear for my life. It lasted less than a second, but I swear I saw one of Oculus's legs twitch. I didn't stick around to disprove my theory. I sprinted back to the entrance as quickly as my legs would carry me. I didn't care if I got yelled at for abandoning the dolly. I needed to get my ass out of there. I was nearly halfway back to the door when it happened. My lungs burned, and my legs begged me to stop, but after what would happen next, a nauseating concoction of adrenaline and dread overtook me, fueling me to pick up the pace. Greg's panicked voice crackled over an intercom, shattering the eerie silence like a sledgehammer. Everyone get out of there now. Oculus is awake. I repeat, Oculus is awake. I don't know what made me do it. I should have just kept running, but no. I glanced back only once, and I immediately regretted it. I peered over my shoulder just in time to see Oculus leap down from its web and bolt into the trees. It was unnaturally fast. Faster than any creature of that size should have been. I turned back with tears in my eyes. I prayed that somehow we would all make it out of there safely. That Oculus would ultimately fail in its demented game of hide and seek. But I had a sinking feeling that my prayers would fall on deaf ears. I could see the door, my salvation. It was so close. I was mere feet from it. My eyes wandered to the brush only for a moment. The trees were moving. That thing was so powerful that they struggled to withstand its wrath. That was all the motivation I needed. I flew through the open doorway and collapsed onto the cool linoleum. Greg released a noticeable sigh of relief, yet fear was still etched into his features. Th the others. Where are th they? I coughed, desperately trying to catch my breath. Lloyd and Ahmad are still in there. All we can do now is hope with all our might that they find us before it finds them.